Hello fellow YouTubers and welcome to my channel. Just a short punchy video today about my near perfect hardware setup for virtual desktop. I've been asked about this so much in the comments, so here it is. Let's get straight into it then and remember, we are born to respawn. First of all, the channel is growing rapidly at the moment, so please hit that like button right now. The algorithm loves the likes. And consider doing all the other stuff that's popping up around me as well. Ta. I've done the virtual desktop setup video here. These videos alone have garnered over 350,000 views. 350,000. That's pretty unbelievable, isn't it? Plus my videos on how to optimize your Wi-Fi to maximize your graphical fidelity have also hit over 100,000 views. But I do keep getting asked, what's your actual hardware setup? So here it is, all the equipment I use to get my internet to my PC, my Wi-Fi to my Quest, and how it all works with the amazing app that is Virtual Desktop to play my PC VR seamlessly with no wires. Well, no wires to the headset that is, there are other wires involved obviously, but wireless to the headset is the most important bit. Excited? I know I am, so let's go. Firstly, these tips work equally well with the Quest or the newer Quest 2. So I have fiber optic broadband to my house and this is my ISP router. It's a BT Smart Hub 2. Okay, my American friends, we're gonna do this right now. Router, router, vitamin, vitamin, aluminum, aluminum. It's just a pronunciation, okay? So let's not get hung up on that. First problem, I have to get ethernet from my router here to the Mac cave, which is at the bottom of my garden. I have a lot of people say, oh, I can't get ethernet to my PC as my router is in a different room. And I say, poppycock, my friends. These are power line adapters. These ones are the AC1350 dual band gigabit adapters from TP-Link. They're quite expensive at 105 pounds, but there are cheaper alternatives available like the TP-Link gigabyte starter kit at only 35 pounds. You can use these amazing little devices to get ethernet to anywhere in your house utilizing your electricery. See what I did there? Electricery. These devices use the electrical wiring in your house to turn your whole house into a high speed ethernet system. All you do is plug them into your electric socket. Once you paired them to each other, then voila, ethernet anywhere. It's blooming genius. So that's the ethernet to my PC problem solved. How do I maximize my Wi-Fi connection to my PC in Quest? I could use the Wi-Fi cloning ability of the TP-Link powerline adapters, but I prefer to keep those channels free for everything else in the Mac cave. Things like phones, tablets, and keeping the wife happy. Why is the Wi-Fi not working? So, I have a dedicated router, router, purely for use with the Quest. This is the TP-Link Archer AX10, which is a budget Wi-Fi 6 router, and cost me 65 pound. The ethernet cable runs directly to the AX10, which I have set up in access point mode. Then another ethernet cable to the PC. So my PC has access to the internet and my Quest connects directly to the AX10 via the five gigahertz channel Wi-Fi. To recap, I connected my ISP router to the power line adapter via ethernet. The power line adapter uses my house's electrical wiring to connect to the second power line adapter. Ethernet cable to my dedicated router, ethernet again to my PC. The Quest is then connected to the dedicated router's 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi channel. This is the optimum setup for low latency and low latency is what is required for virtual desktop to work effectively. So there it is, my near perfect virtual desktop hardware setup. But Mac, you're asking, why are you saying near perfect? Well, easy, I could spend another two to 300 pounds on a top of the range gaming router like this TP-Link Archer AX11000, which looks to me like some kind of sadistic sex toy. And yes, it may improve the performance of virtual desktop by reducing latency, but do you need to spend that extra cash? No, not unless you're a massive YouTube channel who gets all your gear for free. We're looking at you, Linux Tech Tips. Linux Sex Tips. <laughs> My setup gets a near perfect 25 to 30 milliseconds latency, depending on the game, and is perfect for playing Half-Life Alex by myself or a more fast paced online multiplayer game like Population One. What is your ideal setup? What kind of latency are you getting? You know the drill, get involved and comment down below. 
Well, that's it for the day. If you enjoyed this content and found it helpful, please leave a like. The algorithm loves the likes and also consider subscribing. You can also support the channel on Patreon or by buying some of my stylish merchandise from tshirtstudio.com. I can also be found streaming in my mate Surgical's Twitch channel. Check it out here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the other side. Over there now. Otherwise we get... Otherwise we get tra trapped. Oops, people here.